Hi everyone, it's Ricky from the Mancan Media Library and I'm here in our local history room. The reason why I'm in our history room is to share some great news with our family historians. Usually, if you wanted to access Ancestry.com Library Edition, you have to be here using it within the library. But due to the restrictions in place because of COVID-19, for a limited amount of time, you can access it from home for free using a library card. Today, I'm going to show you how to access it and show you a couple of tips to get the most out of the resource. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to access Ancestry Library from the Mount Gambier Library website. So we're just going to click on eCollections on the left hand side. Once the page loads, we're just going to click on Ancestry. We're now required to type in our library barcode number, followed by our password or PIN. If you're unsure of what your details are, please contact the Mount Gambier Library and we'll be happy to help you. At this stage we're presented with a few options, we're just going to click on the top one there which is Ancestry Library. Okay, so we've now got Ancestry up. We can just hit the green button that says Begin Searching. What we now see is the different fields that allow us to type in our search terms. Another thing we could do here is we could press the Show More Options to enable us to type in more information. You'll see once we've done that we get extra fields to help us find the people we're looking for. So what we can do here is we can type in any information we know about the person we're looking for and press Search. You will now be provided with matching results. Just keep in mind the size of Ancestry, some of the information may not be relevant to you and you may have to dig through to find the information that you want. Also keep in mind that being an American site, you often get the American records up the top. Although we can search this way, I often find it's more effective if I narrow down my search to find exactly what I'm looking for. So if I scroll down the page, I can see the different parts of the world. I'm just going to click on Europe and then England. Once I've done this, I then see the different databases that relate to the English records. For this example, I'm going to pretend that I'm searching for a record in the 1881 census. So here, I'm just going to type in the information that I know for the particular person I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a Samuel Woods, and I know that he's got a wife called Lydia, and at least one child called John. So I'm just going to type the information in. Once I've done this, I'm just going to scroll down the page and click search. I'm now provided with my results, hopefully with the most relevant at the top of the list. So once I'm confident I've found the right person, in this case mine's a top result, I'm just going to click the view record option. So now that I'm seeing the full record, not only am I seeing Samuel's details with his name, age, birth year, his occupation and so on, I'm also seeing the other people in the household at the time of the census. If I wished, I could then click on those to find out their information. One of the most exciting things about Ancestry.com is that I can often click the view option for records and see a copy of the original document. So let's do that. So now that it's loaded, I can see a copy of the original document with a beautiful handwriting with all the information as it was transcribed. I can also save that document now to print off later or add it to a family tree. So for this example, I've just used a census record, but using the same methods, you may be able to find things like births, deaths, marriages, parish records, military records, and any number of other sorts of records. Another useful thing about Ancestry.com, particularly for new historians, is the charts and forms options at the top of the page. If we click this option, we'll see a bunch of different charts and forms that we can print off and start recording our information. Hopefully these tips have helped you get the most out of Ancestry.com. Thanks for watching.